Hey everyone, this week I added story elements to my game, including an intro screen, a dialogue window, and missions to complete. So if you want to find out how I did that, I'll see you in a bit. Hi, I'm Steve and I'm building a base building automation strategy game in my spare time. I decided that one of the things that I wanted to differentiate my game from things like Satisfactory and Factorio is to add story elements to it. In order to do this, I'm using a um, scripting language called Ink. And it's actually got a really nice editor called Inkle that goes along with it, which allows you to write branching dialogue really easily and add variables and different loops. So it's from inklestudios.com. You can go and download it. And you can actually get Inky, which is the desktop app that you use to write it. And there's a full tutorial and getting started guide and also Unity integration. So you can just download it on the asset store and get access to that. So here I've got two examples of dialogue. I've got one on the left, which is the intro, which is just simply some text that gets displayed um, in front of an image. And you go next, 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 next through that. And I can set a variable at the beginning and then update the variable um, as we go through. And so what the player sees is they'll see some text and they'll click next and then see some more text. And then and that's um, showing the text that you see and then the button that they can click on. And in this side, we've got a title, which is the main quest, and then a speaker, which is Mark. And then we're allowed to have tags so that you can access bits in code. And we have branching dialogue. So if you click, oh, hi, it will say go to the mission. And then if you say, who's Mark, it will go to this who's Mark section. So if we go through here, we go, welcome to the game. Oh, hi, Mark. And then it will say the mission. Or we can go, welcome to the game. Who's Mark? And it'll say, he betrayed me, but I don't want to talk about it. And you go, all right then. And it will go through to the main mission. And so you get quite a powerful little tool that you can use. So I'm not sure exactly how much dialogue I'm going to put in the game. I want to keep, I want to add story elements to it so that it's interesting and you're getting interesting missions. But I don't want it to be that you're reading walls and walls of text. So I want to get a kind of sweet spot. And then here in game, when we click the new button, we're now presented with this screen, which is the intro screen. And then we get, in 2051, the UN lifts the ban on artificial consciousnesses being used in preparing exoplanets for eventual colonization. And then you hit next, and it says, these beings, nicknamed Archon Archons, are sent into the void in order to bring life and technology to the stars, Archons of construction, science, and of life. It would only be a few decades later when rogue Archons would lay waste to humanity, Archons of war and of death. An untold number of years pass and a lone Archon lands on a distant planet. So we're getting a little bit of background as to what you are. I'm, I'm going to revise this over and over again until I get something a bit nicer. I'm not even sold on any of these story elements, but it's a good start, I think. And then we click start game. And then we're dumped into the game. And then we get this pop-up. So we've got the main quest and the mark. So we go, okay, welcome to the game. Oh, hi, Mark. Who's Mark? Go like that. And then Johnny say, he betrayed me, but I don't want to talk about it. And then you click all right then. And we get, it wouldn't be a game without an objective. So gather 10 iron to win. And we click okay. And then we get the next part is how to win the game. A wise man once told me that you need to get as much iron in your diet as possible. Gather 10 iron. And then we can just go over here. And gather some iron. And it'll update the mission. So how this works in Unity is that I've got, I've now got an intro scene that has my intro screen on it. And I've created this story controller, which has, um, options for what the background image is, uh, button names, and the story that goes into it. So Inky saves its data to these story files, which are just JSON text. And then if I go into my story controller, 
Um, right. So I've got the, I start the story, if we go to there, is that I'm creating a new inky story. So when you import the Unity asset, you get access to the story and you just put the story text into the story. And then you've got access to whether the story can continue and also what all the next lot of choices are. So I simply go through, can it continue? And then you, if it can, you continue the story, which is um, update story text. Then we set the background image, speaker name, title text. And you can just um, get the variables out of the story variable state, which is nice and easy. And then, um, then you update the choices. And these are just bound to um, UI toolkit buttons. So I loop through the, the choice button names and the story current choices, and then update the text. Um, so hopefully that made a little bit of sense. And if I jump back into Unity and go to the uh, intro screen, let's have a look at that. This is the intro screen that I've made in UI, UI Toolkit. So we've got a story panel with the intro text, um, choice button one, choice button two, choice button three, and a continue button that takes us to the next scene. And this is what I'm binding to in the story controller. I'm then reusing that uh, story controller for my dialogue in the main game. So I've got a dialogue window in the main scene, and um, then I've got a dialogue window controller that. Um, handles when that's shown or hidden but the story controller is the same from the intro just with different conversation set up and different um, night, uh, layout element names selected for the choices and text label names so I've actually got a dialogue window also in your UI toolkit if I open up um, that has a different layout so that means that I can have different layouts throughout the game, but still control the story in the same way. So I still got a speaker name, I still got some text and button names. But in this case, I also will have a character image um, and a background image for this. So it gives me a lot of flexibility going forward. And so that's the dialogue system. And the next thing I worked on is the mission system. So when we go to Oh Hi Mark and click OK, then we get our first mission in the game, which is how to win the game. So I'm gonna keep it nice and tight and see if I can get to having a complete game where you log in, do something and then win the game and then kind of extend it from there, see how that goes. So on this, I can just gather some items. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. So it's nice and exciting, whoa. Gather all the items. Uh, and then when you've gathered the last item, it disappears and it says completed mission, how to win the game. So I've not got any rewards or anything yet for that. And how this works is that I've got a scriptable item that is my each mission and I can set the requirements, the goals and the rewards. At the moment, I've just got a gather goal and this is actually using um, so an abstract base class, which is my mission goals. And then I can have different goals based on that. So I can add a build goal. And then if I drop that, and it will say which, like if I'm building an assembler and set the target amount to five, that mean that I will build, I have to build five assemblers for that goal. Um, and I can have different uh, rewards and different requirements. So the idea will be that the requirements will be that you have to have completed a certain mission or have completed a certain dialogue in the game. And here we have the mission scriptable object, which has the list of mission goals. And then when you activate it, it just goes through and loops through um, all the goals and tells the goals to start tracking. And then for example, in my gather goal, when you set start tracking, it starts listening to all the gather events. And every time you gather an item, it will update the current amount and set the mission goal to updated. 
and the mission goals, the abstract base class is just setting a target amount and the current amount. And then as soon as you're the current amount is greater than the target amount and that's when it's set to completed. And then the gather goal will notify via mission events, which goals have been updated. And the mission will listen out for that on mission goal updated. Then we'll check to see if any of them have been completed and then set the mission events, mission updated goal uh, event. So using a lot of events going around, um, but it seems to be working quite well. I'm also switching over to a different style of events because I was using scriptable objects for events. And now my actual events are just C sharp events. So I can just handle things directly and it's a lot cleaner. But it does mean that I'm losing some ability to assign events in the um, inspector, which actually makes my life a lot easier. So I'm going to stick with this for a while and see how that works. But it's quite a nice, clean mission system so far, and it seems to work quite well. So this is something that I will expand on and add um, different uh, like different rewards, different trackable goals, and also different requirements. So there's a lot of room for extensibility as I go forward. And that's everything I've got to show you for you this week. Hopefully you've enjoyed seeing how the um, infrastructure and the, the structure of the actual dialogues and um, the story and missions is going. Um, hopefully I'll show you more about the conveyors and more actual gameplay in the next few weeks as I get into making things a bit juicier and actually getting the game going. So thank you for watching this and hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.